Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our interview question review series. Today, we're going to cover the topics of EBITDA, and in particular, how EBITDA relates to free cash flow. This is a common interview question, so hopefully we can clear it up for you here. So with that said, let's hop in. So EBITDA, to begin with, is our earnings before interest and taxes, which is really just the profit of the business on an accounting basis. So we could say that that is our accounting profit before interest and tax expenses. Then we add to that depreciation and amortization, which are non-cash charges. So the idea here is we want to look at our profit, but we want to back out any non-cash charges because those don't reflect real cash outflows in the current period. And you'll hear a term around this, which is that this is a proxy for cash flow or a proxy for free cash flow. So EBITDA can be described as either of those. And I want to talk now about what that means, and in particular, why it's called a proxy and not actual cash flow. On that note, let's get rid of the profit and non-cash here and lay out the calculation of our cash flow to the right. Now, it's worth noting that we're calculating uh, unlevered free cash flow here. Levered is leverage. Leverage is debt. What we're really showing here is the cash generation of the business without taking into account debt. And let's walk through the formula for that. So the commonly accepted formula for free cash flow is, it actually starts in the same place, as EBIT. And then what we do is we take out tax. We add back depreciation and amortization. You can see this is very similar to our EBITDA calc. And then we subtract CapEx or capital expenditures, which are reinvestments in uh, physical property, plant, and equipment. And then we make adjustments plus or minus changes in our networking capital accounts like inventory, um, accounts receivable, accounts payable, and so on. And that gets us to unlevered free cash flow, which again is the cash generation of the business before we take into account debt in any form. Now, let's draw comparisons from EBITDA to this unlevered free cash flow calculation. So to begin with, let's look at EBIT and draw that across and draw a connection. And then let's look at DNA and connect that across here as well. And what we can see when we do this is exactly what's missing um, in terms of you know, when you're calculating EBITDA, like what's missing to get to free cash flow. In particular, we're not incorporating tax, which is one thing, so it's an after-tax metric. But what people really tend to focus on is the fact that EBITDA excludes both our capital expenditures, our reinvestments in the business, as well as any changes in networking capital, which are really just tied up cash in the business in a given period. So for example, if we acquired inventory, that would actually be a use of cash. It's a cash outflow. And we would want to reflect that, and that would, that would be reflected here. The term, by the way, that you'll hear around these two is capital intensity. And what this means is, or what the meaning behind this term is, how much capital do I have to reinvest for every dollar I make in the business? And it's not necessarily expressed as a percentage, but it's more a concept of, if I make $100, do I have to invest all of that money back? Or... Um, very little of that money back. So high capital intensity means I'm reinvesting a lot. Low capital intensity means I'm reinvesting very little and I get to keep those dollars. So the punchline here is EBITDA is really a shorthand metric that allows us to approximate our unlevered free cash flow. But what it doesn't do is take into account the capital intensity of the business. Um, it actually neutralizes that. And so you'll often see when people create valuation metrics around this, they'll often adjust EBITDA to uh, reflect capital intensity, in particular CapEx. So you'll see a valuation metric relative to EBITDA minus CapEx as opposed to just EBITDA. So that's really the big difference between these two. Hopefully this makes a little more sense now. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. Please don't forget to subscribe. We're gonna have a lot more of this coming soon.